Hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and today I have the Google Pixel 3 XL and the iPhone XS Max. This is 2020, and I kind of want to look at the software between these phones. Both of these phones here in 2020 can be had for pretty good prices, uh, whether that's a, if you can find a new one or a refurbished one or a used one, whatever. I think you can find pretty good prices on both of these phones now, pretty substantially less than the current flagships. And let's just kind of go over what we got here software-wise, okay? So with the Pixel 3 XL here, we do have Android 10, okay? And, uh, you know, that's the latest and greatest from Google. You'll notice right off the bat, before I even picked up the phone, that we do have an always-on display, as you can see there. That's definitely something the iPhone doesn't have here. Um, and that's going to be kind of a little bit of a theme here. As far as customization goes, I think what you're going to find here is that the Pixel has a little bit more software customizations and features that you can do versus the iOS 13 experience. Okay, so this is Google's launcher here. This is how I have mine set up with some icons and then some widgets here. Okay, and then, you know, if I go up here, I got my app drawer here. Okay, and I like having the app drawer. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, it's really not as hard to organize your phone on an Android device, I don't think, versus an iPhone. Because on the iPhone, you've got to kind of create these folders, which I guess you can do here too. But I really don't create folders on the Android, at least in my usage right now. I just leave everything in the app drawer, and that's kind of one giant folder for me, I guess you would say. Um, but, uh, if we, you know, long press here, we can look at the home settings, okay? You've got, uh, notification dots, you know, for apps that get notifications, okay? Go to advanced, okay? So, do you definitely have a good amount of features here, for sure, Okay? And you do have the uh, at a glance at the top of the screen, okay? It gives you your calendar events, any flights or traffic information, okay? And uh, you can turn on to display the Google app to the left of your home screen. So I just turned that on. That'll get you this kind of rundown. With cards, you know, you got your weather, you've got some news stories, whatever, uh, however you want to get your news, what topics interest you and whatnot. I leave that turned off because I find it a little bit distracting when I want to get things done. It, you know, you can kind of spend a lot of time over there, you know, just killing time. So I leave it turned off. Um... And then you can allow home screen rotation here. Some people might like that. Again, I turned it off because I found I was getting accidental rotations that I didn't want. And then, of course, you can turn it on to add icons to your home screen desktops. When you get new apps, I leave that turned off. Okay, now you do have the ability to add widgets here to your desktops, and you can have multiple pages, as you can see here. Pretty good setup there. Okay, now with Android 10, Google has allowed you to customize this area as far as how your icons look, the shape of them, how the inside of them looks, what the symbol looks like, and then as far as the color goes. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no way to change the grid, which is pretty unfortunate. You kind of are stuck with this uh, three by three grid. 
I'm not sure, maybe if you change the screen zoom, maybe it would change it, I don't know, but let's look at the battery here. You can decide when your battery saver will turn on. I really like that feature, okay. Um, display, okay, you do have, you know, your brightness there and then the dark theme, okay. Uh, I leave that on all the time right now. I leave my night light on all the time because I like that extra brown tint. I think it makes the colors pop a little bit more. Um, if I turn it off, you can kind of see the screen got much more naturalistic looking. I kind of like the contrast more, so I leave that on. Uh, you do have the adaptive brightness, which on this phone I definitely use. Uh, helps with battery life. Um, you can do 30 minutes till the screen times out. Definitely like that. Uh, and then you've got three different modes here for your calibration of your screen. I've been using adaptive, but it's nice to have boosted. Some people might want that natural looking display. Okay. Um, so it's all in what you want, but it is nice to have the options here. Okay. And then font size, display size. Let's turn that down a second and see. Uh, no, it's still three by three there, so that didn't do us anything on that. Uh, yeah, it got a screensaver. You can have this on when your phone's charging um, at night or while it's in its stock, and that allows you to be able to see a clock floating around the display. It's kind of a night clock. It's definitely good. I like that. Uh, I'm just not using this phone as my daily driver right now, or I would have that turned on. Okay, so sound. Okay, here's your options here. Again, you can pause the video and look over those if you so desire. Um, storage. That's what that looks like. Uh, here's the accessibility options. Again, you can pause the video if you want to look at those. Um, got digital well-being. Okay. So that'll give you a breakdown of how you use your phone. And so that's your pretty much your setup here with Android 10 on the Pixel 3 XL. Okay, so now let's switch gears here and, and look at the iPhone 10s Max with iOS 13. See how that compares. So this has uh, iOS 13, which was, you know, it's a good update from 12. Uh, the way Apple has it set up here, you just got your standard icons here. You can create folders. Okay, you've got your dock down here, which you can put four icons in. And then one thing I really like about iOS here is the ability of having all your widgets centralized on the left side here. I really like this. I think this is a good setup, a good look here. Okay, and the shortcuts app from Apple also adds extra functionality something definitely to check out okay but definitely uh, a good setup here okay you, you know you can change your wallpaper but you can't change your icon gridding or um, even how the icons look you can't install a third-party launcher here what you see with this phone is pretty much how it has to look it's there's not a whole lot of customization that goes on here you can customize this area uh, as far as which icons you want to show here and kind of what you want to show to some degree 
Okay, so that's okay. Um, and then this is your slide down for your notifications here. Okay, so some customization here. I don't think it's quite as much, though, as Google's offering with Android 10. But let's jump into the settings. Okay, so basically what we got going on here. You can kind of look here. Got your storage here. It'll take a second to calculate. And uh, breaks it down pretty nicely for you. Gives you a good way uh, to see what's taking up space. I definitely like how it tells you how big a size an app is. That way you can easily de delete it off your device if you're running low on storage. Might be good if you had a 32 gigabyte iPhone or less. This is the 64 gig model, so... Got enough storage here. Um, there's your font settings. You can install different fonts. I've not really gotten into that, but I might check that out. Um, okay, so you've got your screen time here. Okay, that's good. That's like digital well-being on the Pixel. Okay, you've got, here's your sound options. I like how this is broken down to be able to pick your tones for everything. Definitely like this setup. Um, so I, I like their Apple's organization here. Uh, this is what I was talking about with Control Center. So you can add things to your Control Center. Like say I wanted to add... The text size, there we go. Oop. Okay, now I got it. If I scroll down here, see those three different things I just added are now in the control center. So that's pretty nice. I like how you can customize this. Um, I wish, obviously, there was a little more customization, but... Not bad here, okay. Display and brightness, okay, you do have a light and a dark mode. If I switch to light mode, you can kind of see it just made it like it always used to look. Okay, I prefer dark mode here. You can do automatic. I think that goes by sunrise, sunset, and whatever region you're in, I'm not sure. Uh, you do have true tone. That adapts your uh, colors to the environment. That's nice. I like that. I do leave night shift on 24-7 as you can see here. Um, I like the extra boost. I believe that it gives the colors. Um, auto lock. I got mine set to never because five minutes is just not enough. I wish you had 30 minutes or an hour here. Uh, don't really like how that's set up. You do have raised awake. If I turn that on, basically if the phone's sitting here and I pick it up, it'll wake up as I pick it up. Okay, turn that off. Ah, uh, you got your text size here, okay. Uh, you can do bold text and then your view. This is another thing. I wish there were more options, like a smaller view. It's just standard or zoomed. If I click zoom here, okay, it just makes... I don't know if that went into effect. Uh... I might have to exit it. Let's see. Uh, I don't see any difference really, but uh, you might have to. I'm not sure how you. Oh, got to hit set. Uh, I don't want to restart, so let's not do that. But it'll just basically make everything bigger. Okay. So let's look at assess. Oops. 
accessibility here. Okay. This is your options. You can pause the video and look at this stuff. Um, touch options here. Okay. Uh, side button options. Hearing. Okay. Subtitles. Well, that's audio and visual. And then subtitles. Ugh. There we go. Okay, so you can kind of see there. Um, so good setup there. We got wallpaper here. Okay, you got lock screen wallpaper and home screen wallpaper. Okay. Uh, so yeah, guys, uh, battery and... Okay. You can activate your low power mode. Okay. So, you know, uh, pretty good setup here. Uh, you know, I don't think it's got quite the customization in iOS 13 that you have on Android 10. But it's, it's close. It's just Apple, I think, wants you to do things a certain way. And you're kind of left with that way, which isn't necessarily bad or anything. It's just... A different way of going about it but I think you got good offerings here from both you know Google and Apple so depending on what you want I'd say if you like to customize your phone a little bit more then the pixels definitely gonna be probably the route you want to go um, you know you can calibrate your screen color you can change your icons you got more freedom with widgets uh, the only thing I think iOS might do a little bit better is the app quality and how the apps look, in my opinion, seems to be a little bit more polished in iOS, even uh, really in the third-party app department, I think you definitely see a little bit more polish uh, versus Android apps, but Android is, is not far behind in that area, and some apps on Android definitely look just as polished, um, but because Apple has that, you know, way of doing things, you get more uniformity, and I think what appears to be more polish over here, uh, so guys, those are my thoughts, I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out.